but on a rainy day in the Northeast. We got rotation three one one three one two Duke. They are they are uh, they are what laying three on a total of fifty five and a half uh, against the Yellow Jackets. I can't imagine you want to bet on the Jackets, do you? No. Where the hell does this line come from? Like I, honestly, I don't I don't understand this. I think this is this is like kind of lazy. Like it, I mean, Georgia Tech was a I don't know what the number of what we said last week when we when I gave out Georgia Tech was like a twenty two twenty three point yeah yeah we graded yeah to, to Pitt mm-hmm. yeah so they can't be upgraded that much more significantly or just like in the base power ratings Georgia Tech and Duke aren't that far apart maybe they're not updating Duke um, enough like you know. They had a chance to beat Kansas, okay, who is 5-0. and um, They beat a Virginia team, like, who doesn't have a great offense, but, I mean, it's still it's still an ACC win uh, in their belt, right? And and they, they significantly outgained them 377 to 2, 295. They had 26 first down to UVA's 19 first downs, dominated time of possession, um, I just don't really think this is a bad team. And I gave out that over, which almost hit, but it did not. It's really surprising that Virginia's offense was so anemic. But, um, yeah, I just – I think Duke is a much better team than we're anticipating here. Like, Georgia Tech is on – you know, the, the program is on the verge of collapse. Um, and Duke, that with Mike Elko in, is clearly, you know, turning the program around. Um so yeah, I'm 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 here on the on the on the Blue Devils. I don't I don't get this at all. This should be I mean, five points, seven points, not three. I mean, I feel like there's definitely a view that like Duke and 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 the, and the Jackets were in like the same tier coming into the season. Yeah. So like, I hear you. These are two teams going in different directions. In a, I mean, in a sense, the Jackets have covered two in a row, right? So in that sense, they're going in a positive direction. But, um, but like, yeah, these are, these are definitely two programs going in different directions. I would see I – would, I would like to know what the line was coming into the season. That's what I would be curious about. Last year at Duke, the Jackets were laying four. Last time here, two years ago, it was a pickup. So I wonder whether it was meant to be a pick em coming into the season or not. Probably. Like, right? <clears throat> like, so it hasn't moved that much. Yeah, uh, I would definitely actually, wait a three before I took it. If yeah. we look at Brad, if we look at Brad Powers' numbers, like which are not the be all end all, but just like you know, they're probably a pretty good representation of of things, and the, and especially the preseason consensus. He would have power rated Duke at around uh, slightly under a 53 and Georgia Tech slightly above 61. So now that's flipped from Duke to 59 and change to Georgia Tech is 58 and change. <clears throat> okay. So we're basically treating this like a neutral stadium. Yep. Which, which in fact, it probably is. I mean, right? It's not far off necessarily, right? I wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, there's there's the matter of travel down there. Like, no one likes to travel. But all right, hey, I'd lay it before I took it. Um, yeah, I'm into it. Exactly. I'm into it. Now, now this next one, this next one, you could convince me of any side of rotation three two one three two two Buffalo heading to Ohio to take on the Bowling Green State Falcons. It's the Bulls who are road favorites, laying two on a total of 54-and-a-half. I could see this going anyway. I mean, you could convince me of anything, Ben. Wow. Convince you of anything. What power. With great power comes great responsibility, Tony. Um, So the way I'm looking at this is these are two teams with pretty bad defenses um, and rather cromulent offenses. So I'm going on the over on um, a rather, I mean, it's like maybe about an average total in college football, but I think this is a little bit low. Um, 
especially like with these Mac games, because they, they have these like weird out of conference schedules. The, I feel like the data, um, which would be used as an input in these power ratings um, is really, really bad. Um, because that's just not reflective of like their performance or their capabilities within the Mac. So um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm going over here. So, um, okay. Let's go through the last few games here with, with Buffalo. Okay. So Buffalo versus Miami of Ohio. Okay. They were outgained 359 yards to 278. They ended up winning that game in a close one, though. But mm. um, gave up a decent amount of of yards in that one. Hold up. First, and that was versus a backup, by the way. Miami of Ohio's backup. Also versus East, um, Eastern Michigan. Um, also versus a backup. They gave up uh, 327 yards to a backup. Um and a bad Eastern Michigan team versus Coastal Carolina in a game that they lost. They gave up 504 yards. In this game versus Holy Cross, they lost on a last-second touchdown, a last-second Hail Mary, and in that game, they gave up 464 yards. So let's look at the Bowling Green Falcons. Something very similar here. They played Akron last week, one close 31-28. to Gave up 408 yards to fucking Akron, okay, um, versus the game where they won in overtime versus uh, Marshall. Marshall ga- um, uh, put up 547 yards on Bowling Green. They gained 377, just in case you wanted to know. And versus East, East Kentucky, Eastern Kentucky, they gave up 442 yards and lost that game. So I think these are two teams, both that are playing a a little close against bad competition, teams that have the ability to shift the bed defensively versus, you know, average or below average FCS programs. Um, I think this might be a little bit of a sweat because this isn't going to be like Kent State from last year. Um, But I think both of these teams' offense are decent enough but more importantly, defenses are bad enough to let this go over the total. Um, so that's that's how I'm thinking about this. Well, one thing I'll definitely give you is that the Buffalo the, the Buffalo side is going to play with pace. They are one of the highest paced teams in the nation. The downside is that the Falcons are going to try to play pretty slow. So it's kind of important to this game that Buffalo score first in order to make sure we get eight touchdowns. If the Falcons yeah. had their way, this will be a close to the vest kind of game. Um, is the right team favored? I have no freaking idea. Because if, if, I, if I thought that Bowling Green was going to win, I would parlay them with the under, probably. But um, I'm, I'm torn. I kind of see it your way. I kind of expect both teams to score, though. And, and I mean, there's no reason why they – there's no reason why they couldn't. Last year, this meeting went way over. This was a 56-44 game last year. Yep. And these teams like, aren't that different. Bowling Green had one of – had some – I think it was in the top five or might have been in the top three of returning production. I think Buffalo was more middle of the pack. So, but we're seeing pretty similar teams from last year. You know what? Yeah, I kind of like the sound of this. Yeah, I'm into it. So, yeah, I think there's lots of 54 and a half out there. So we bred this to 54 and a half. And yeah, we're looking to the over. Fuck yeah, let's do it. Now, this next one, I don't know. You might feel some kind of way about this next one. I know that I feel fucking strongly about it. It's Oregon State at Stanford. It's Oregon State coming to the farm as road favorites, something that has never happened. Let's just get that straight. Never have the Beavers laid this number on the road at Stanford, and here they are laying a full touchdown on a total of 57. So, I mean, the home team to me is irresistible. Let's just get that straight. 
That and that has nothing to do with me being a Stanford backer. I'm gonna conveniently forget the way USC tore him apart because honestly, that was a lot of turnovers by McKee. That was a lot of turnovers. And even despite that, Stanford still hung in that game for most of it. How many when when was the last time do you suspect Oregon State beat Stanford? It was last year, right? When was the last time before that? It was like 20 years ago. Are, are, are you looking – is that just your gut or you're looking at information? Oh, no. I, no, that's a note. I definitely looked that shit up. Um, anyway, like – now, granted, Oregon State did win decisively last year. But aside from that, never have they won this matchup. And I don't see these teams being a touchdown apart on the road. Look, if the Cardinal can't get their offense going in this game, sure, it'll be a disaster. But if they can just move the ball a bit, they definitely have what it takes to hang with Chance Nolan. Give me the points all day here. Yeah, according to Winsipedia, it was last year uh, Oregon State won, and then they had not won since 2009. And both of those were in Corvallis. But Mm, that's when the Stanford program was considerably better. Um, whereas the wheels are kind of possibly falling off at Stanford. The wheels are and... not falling off. Okay, let's just <laughs> get that straight. The wheels are not <laughs> falling off. They have a lot of talent. They have a good. They have a good program. It's just like shit didn't work. All right, USC. USC was lucky to cover, or not lucky. But I mean, they ran good. The Huskies are fucking on to something. Don't tell me that DeBoer is not the guy. He is the guy. He's a fucking guru, okay? And, you know, Oregon's Oregon. Um, well, they haven't been to a bowl game since 2019. Cardinal. The Cardinal. So, since 2018, excuse me. It's Red been flag, a while. To say the least. It's been a while. It's been the, a while. Um, uh, I mean, my, they would have gone bowling in the coronavirus season. It just, you know, was coronavirus. Um, right. Right. Um, <clears throat> my, uh, my question is, I thought Chance Nolan was hurt. He got knocked that out, li- so they're going with fucking Jevia. That line indicates that he's going to play. So um, maybe he plays, um, you know, uh, he underperforms recovering from his injury. I don't know. Um, I feel like Stanford is due to at least have a close game and possibly get a win, right? So I feel like that's that might be the right side, but I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't bet it would. Yeah, with your with your money. Or my well, money. the problem is is that the, is that the Stanford defense has bad numbers because they've gone yeah. up against really good offenses, but they've been a step down in competition here, and they're doing so at home in a in a kind of a circle the wagon spot. Yeah, well, I'm going to be sprinkling that money line. That's I'm not answer. really I'm not really sure Oregon State is um, a step down in competition from the from the folks who they played. Oregon State should have beat USC. They had fucking four turnovers. Uh, look, they they laid they laid a trap for him, right? Like that was just one of those things. An mm-hmm. overconfident coach Riley went to play a team that had something for him. Like whatever. Mm. This game is this game's in Palo Alto. It's gonna be a different story. Now, another another little small wrinkle is Stanford does have to go to South Bend next week. And that's and that's a very big game. But but it's good it's good to catch a team, it's good to catch a dog on a on a losing streak. It's hard to look ahead when you're on a losing streak. Well, I, I wish it I'm not gonna go ahead to head on, on, on this with you, but um your record backing Stanford um, Don't start. is not very impressive. Don't start. Don't start with me, okay? Because I also – I got some wins in there too, okay? Like, 
you know what? The last time, the last time Stanford went up to Corvallis, they won, and I took them. All right, and then and then also, they beat UCLA the next week. All right, so like I've got some wins with Stanford. It just was last year. It was rough, and then mm-hmm. also that USC game wasn't ideal. But look, you know, every week I'm looking for ways to back the Cardinal. Whatever. Hey, it's about one. it's about time. It's about time. I, it's not about being due. It's a good spot. Rotation three eight one three eight two. Texas Tech headed to Stillwater. The Pokes laying nine at home on a total on a total that got bet up to seventy. My goodness, this shit was sixty three or like sixty four when we looked at it last. Um, well, I guess I would lean under now. Which way are you looking? Yeah, I'm on the undies myself. I mean, the line it seems to have gotten rather dislocated. I don't know what are what are people seeing that we're not seeing. I think Texas Tech as a brand, people assume that the game's going to go over the total. Like I just feel like because of the Leach era and the, and the Cliff Kingsbury era, like that's what people assume is going to happen. They haven't. They don't really play in super super high scoring games. I mean, obviously some of these are are high scoring, but not not crazy high scoring like like they used to in the past. Um, here's here's why I like this. Texas Tech. Um, let me get into these games. So Texas Tech has scored thirty points, fourteen points, and thirty thirty seven and twenty eight points. Um, so far this year, um, in these games, they have let me get this pretty decently long drives. So as an example, we've got um, on these scoring drives here. So this is the from the game of K State nine plays, 86 yards, four and a half minutes. On this touchdown scoring drive, seven plays, 75 yards, about three minutes. Um, almost when they missed a field goal, six plays, 51 yards, two minutes, missed a field goal. Um, the last touchdown they scored, 13 plays, 75 yards, three minutes and 31 seconds. Um, and they've also turned over the ball pretty, pretty frequently here. So. I don't really think that they're very explosive. They're sort of like plotting and, and methodical. Um, so I think when Texas Tech has the ball, um, we're not going to see a crazy amount of, of, um, mm-hmm. of scoring. Uh, on The problem with Texas Tech is they can't really stop the run very well. But this Oklahoma State Cowboys um, is not really um, – is is not really that much of a, a of a running team, but I think they're going to try to take advantage of that. So so far, um, Texas Tech has, on average, allowed 150 yards per game. But I guess that includes Murray State. So let's look at K State box score. They allowed 343 yards from by from K State in. The Texas Tech game, they allowed rushing uh, 151 yards, and I'll do um, just this NC State game, and I can also do um, Houston if you're interested. Uh, They rushed for 111 yards. So I think probably Oklahoma State is going to try to um, stick to the ground game here. Um, and so that, that makes me, uh, uh, lean, lean to the under here. So again, Texas Tech is not very explosive, long methodical drives, uh, turns the ball over quite easily. And I think Oklahoma state in order to, um, capitalize on Texas Tech's primary weakness will be mostly running the ball, but they're not extremely explosive in doing so. So I don't think Texas Tech is going to give up you know, 75-yard uh, runs like uh, Oklahoma did to TCU. So that's why I like Thunder. 
I mean, I yeah, I kind of feel I kind of feel the same. Like I kind of feel like the market continues to misread Oklahoma State. I mean, that second half was crazy last week against Baylor. Then we did smack the first half under. That yeah. was a well chosen best bet. Um, and like people, mm, people don't. Yeah, people don't appreciate that this Gundy strategy is going to be opposed to going over. I mean, Tech, while they haven't scored enough, right, they they definitely have moved the ball well enough, and they definitely have enough, like, have enough pace to get this game over 10 touchdowns. Um, we definitely are kind of betting on the pokes as well as the under. Like, minus nine and under 70 kind of go together. They're kind of friends. Um like, because I don't, I don't know, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if the if, if Oklahoma State is going to win a game, like something like forty eight to forty. I think if they let Tech score forty points, Tech is going to win. Or you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they're going to have to hold this team down, at least a little bit. I don't know. I think Tech will, as you said. Tech will be able to move the ball. I think Tech's problem is if they get if they get down late or down early, excuse me, they just don't have the explosive firepower. So I don't. I think you're kind of right, but I I could see this landing at um, being a little bit closer than than the nine and a half, just because they've only played close games so far. Thirty-three to thirty in in. Uh, double overtime to Houston, 27 to 14 versus NC State. Um, obviously, that would have covered in this situation. 37 to 34 in overtime versus Tech uh, versus Texas. Um, uh, 37 to 28 versus uh, K State. So uh, they've just been playing close games. So um, I don't really like either side here. If I was leaning to a side, it would be the Texas Tech side, but. Um, Overall, um, I like the the under, as I've mentioned, um, and I love that it's being inflated. Well, there's no argument there. The total is definitely being inflated. So, like, yeah, the only thing to do is to fade a market move by a touchdown at, at this point. So, yeah, I'm definitely down with the under 70. And and while we're while we're on the theme of going against the grain of the market. Rotation three eight five three eight six, Texas A and M heads to Tuscaloosa to take on a Crimson Tide team that found out last week that they have a backup quarterback they could roll with. The 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 Tide are laying twenty four and a half at home on a total fifty one and a half. So you can see what the market thinks of A and M scoring chances here. I tend to disagree. I think Jimbo's guys are going to have something for Alabama now. I cannot see them winning this game again, but I can definitely mm-hmm. see them keeping this game within three touchdowns. I can see them trying to the final whistle. I don't think I, I think this line is is definitely reflective of what has occurred so far this season. The Aggies have embarrassed themselves, and as a result, I expect that, you know, the way this season comes to an end is going to be on the uglier side. But if they have a week of crisp practices in them, a week of focus in them, it is this week. This is definitely the Aggies Super Bowl. Bama cannot possibly be doing film study and taking this team seriously. Like, they can try to remember losing last year, but even in retrospect, that feels like luck now. I wonder, I wonder what this line would be had the Hogs managed to cover last week. I wonder what this line would be had the Aggies not been embarrassed by LSU. Twenty-four and a half uh, is too much tuna. Six points. Do you do you remember? Because I do. Do you remember what the the line was that the sports book posted? The sports books posted when uh, Jimbo and Saban were having their tit for tat. Oh, yeah, that's right. Coming into the season, this line was something like 16, 17? 17 and a half. Okay. All right, yeah, fuck it. Full touchdown. I like it. Yeah, and Kane's King is no longer the quarterback. And it seems like with Max Johnson in there, um, 
they've improved. I could, yeah, right. I can see, yeah, a and giving us their best game of the season here. Pretty easily could see that. And again, yeah. A&M defense is no slouches. So, like, don't don't expect them to get just pushed off the field. Like, Bama jumped on the Hogs last week because the Hogs defense ain't it. But, nope. but it's going to be a different, it's going to be a different story. Yeah, I like that. All right, nice. All right, we got one more here. And I bet we're seeing this one the same way. Rotation three nine three two nine four. Iowa heading up the Champagne. It's the Illini laying the hook at home. Three and a half on a glorious total of thirty six and a half. A total which feels spot on. Now, Illinois riding high, getting Paul Chris fired. But we knew coming into the season that Paul Chris was going to get himself fired because we knew that Wisconsin was not going to be able to move the ball effectively, and they were going to embarrass themselves as a result. And that's you exactly really, what You the really fu- called that. You're like, Paul oh, Chris yeah. should be fired. <laughs> you, yeah. you really called that. <laughs> yeah, it was over for him. Like, I, And, hey, hey, let's be fair. I did not take the money line last week. I was only on the points myself. So, like, I should have took the money line too. But anyway, um, yeah. This is this is a mistake. Illinois is not in a position to be laying the hook to Iowa, even at home. Like this is this line has gone too far. This this spread was was double digits last year. You can't turn around and tell me Illinois is laying three and a half, and then you tell me the total is around five touchdowns, and I'm supposed to believe the Illini are going to pull away. No dice. This game is going to be played in a phone booth, and it's going to come down to a field goal either way. This hook is gravy. Now, you tell, now I know you also were interested in this game. Which way were you looking? Um, you were born in 87 or 88? I was born in 86, too. You were born in 86? I thought you were, you, I thought you were like a full year younger than me. No. Nah. Like a year of change, right? Uh, I'm I'm May eighty six. You're like October. Oh, I'm only half a year younger. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're you're October, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, look at that. Okay, so since you've been born, how many times do you think Illinois has won this matchup? And they've played almost every single year. Looks like. In the late 80s, they didn't play for some reason. But how many times do you think Illinois has has won this matchup? You're kidding. No, no, no. First of all, you're telling me Lovey never won this matchup? Uh, no. Neither Lovey nor Bielema no. never won this matchup. Wow. Okay. So then I'm just going to go ahead and be like they've won twice in the last 30 years. It's eight times. That's all right. That's not terrible. It, like it's, eight, it's not great. Eight, eight and nineteen. Great. Eight and nineteen. That's not bad. That's um, like a third of the time. Since two, since including the year two thousand, they have won twice. Mm. Hmm. Um, yeah. Illinois won this matchup uh, three years in a row, nineteen ninety three through nineteen ninety five. Um, yeah. Ridiculous. Um, Illinois has just had the best win in decades last week, um, skull fucking uh, Wisconsin at Camp Randall. Um, it's Illinois. Like this, this is the team that I said was going to be like the darling, darling team this year. They've done really well. I bet this will be a close competitive game, but ultimately um, Ohio is by far by far the best defense that they've seen this year. Um, Wisconsin, Chattanooga, UVA, Illinois, Wyoming, the by far the best team, um, best program, um, and best defense they've played. And our boy Spencer, he passed for 246 yards versus, versus Michigan last week. Okay, he is on the come up my friend, from having like a 
um, a 0.5 QBR. I think he's at like a oh 51.5 QBR. So he's he's back up on on the come up. Okay, they they got maybe the some some of the pieces are falling into place on the offensive side. So um, yeah, love it. Love the Hawkeyes. This makes makes no sense. This should be a pick. You know what? I'm kind of convinced. I can't. I kind of feel like we saved the best for last. This feels like this the is best our best bet. bet. Yeah. Yeah, this feels like the best bet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a race. Yeah, it's a race to 17 points. Let's see you get 17 first. I bet you they win. Yeah, if you can grab that hook, I wouldn't be surprised if if this gets decided within a three. So grab that hook. Yeah, for sure. Well, well, and, we jammed this it, one. Yeah. Yeah, and and sprinkle put in a parlay, Iowa for the outright. Yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, why not, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I am, um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Like, hey, you know, we jammed this in the middle of the work day, but uh, but I think it came out all right. Amen. Amen. 